In this video, we're gonna talk about Alsovatni, or the heathen baptism. Coming up. With this water, we wash away all the... Welcome to the Northwoods Kindred. I'm your goalie, Bodvar. And on this channel, we discuss all things Asatru Kindred related. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see how we do it in the Northwoods. We get a lot of questions about the naming rituals or the baptismal rituals because people have seen them or heard about them, but they think that it's a Christian idea and they don't want to include it in their own kindred practices, but they know that there's something about it. So that's why we're doing the video. And I hope that, uh, I hope that you get something out of it or at least get a really good source of references that you can go back to look to and kind of flesh out your own traditions as you build them for your kindred. So in the Viking Age, when a child was born, it is said that that was the evening the Norns showed up. And they would lay the child on the floor and they, nobody would touch it until eventually the father would pick the child up and put it in the folds of his cloak. And then he would look at the child and judge it, judge its future uh, based on its temperament, its look, and make predictions about where, where it would go in the future. Uh, if the father wasn't around, then another close relative would do that. Once that was done, they would make the decision based on the child's physical appearance and temperament, whether or not the child was to be left out, which is to be set out in the forest for the wolves or the whites to take away. That was real similar to the Spartan ritual. And once they decided the child was gonna live, they performed the Asavatni, which is the sprinkling of water or the heathen baptism. Once that baptism took place, it was considered murder to leave the child out. This was a sacred rite and considered part of the Asa Creed, part of the religion of whatever they called it back then. And it certainly predated anything Christian baptism related. And according to Paul Duchelieu, some form of water rite under one shape or another was practiced by Egyptians, Greeks, Persians, Hebrews, Romans, Hindus, etc. in the Frankish annals, the Northmen, uh, when they were baptized were led into the rivers, a custom which apparently prevailed among the earlier Christians with adult people. So that, that whole custom of leading people into the water to baptize them started with the Northmen and then it just kind of permeated Christianity and became the Christian baptismal ceremony. But it started as, in common terms, water sprinkling. Uh, a newborn baby, or sometimes giving an adult a new name or a modifier to their name. So it does say it was once no doubt practiced by the Franks who belonged to the northern tribes and certain forms of Christian baptism to the present day may be based upon this earlier form which was only changed in name by the earlier Christian uh, missionaries. That the heathen or Asa baptism was not recognized by the Christians, we have ample proofs in the sagas. The Asa form uh, as we have seen, is called Asavatni and the Christian Skern. So here's an example from the sagas, from Egil's saga, actually. Harold Fairhair, when he began to get old, gave his son the rule of Norway. He made Eric the king over all of his sons, and when he had ruled for 70 winters, gave the kingship into his hands. At that time, Gunhild, Eric's wife, bore a son, and Harold water sprinkled him and gave him his own name, therewith declaring that he shall be the king after his father if he should live. That's in Edgel Saga, chapter 59. So the child was generally given the name of some renowned kinsman, or in some cases they would pick a renowned person in order to water sprinkle the child, and that person would give the child their own name, bearing with it supposedly the luck, the reputation, and the skill of the person whose name they took. So Sigurd, the son of Ragnar Lothbrok, was also named after his grandfather Sigurd Ring, and with that name came a gift. It was called Nafenfesti, or name fastening, and it was a gift that came with the name. So the birth of Sigurd, the son of Ragnar Lothbrok, is thus described as, the time arrived when Kraka, or Oslog, was con confined and bore a son, whom the servant maids took and showed to her. She bade them carry him to Ragnar Lothbrok and let him see him. The boy was taken into the hall and placed in the fold of Ragnar's cloak. When he saw the boy, Ragnar was asked what he should be named, and he sang this song. Sigurd shall the boy be named. He will fight battles and be much like his mother and be called his father's son. 
he will of Odin's family. The foremost man be called that serpent in his eye, which another slew. And they, that's of course in reference to uh, Sigurd's grandfather who slew the dragon Fafnir. So it's life leading into mythology. He drew a gold ring from his hand and gave it to the boy as a name fastening. So that was traditional in those days to gift uh, weapons, shields, helmets, and armor, um, arm rings, things of value, uh, lands, homes, uh, slaves and servants. Those were all things that could be gifted to an infant or to a grown person at a name fastening by the person who gave them the name or the person whose name they bear. Special or characteristic names were often given to grown-up persons as name fastenings for one reason or another, in addition to their proper name, and almost every important man seemed to have one. So what we do here in the Northwoods, without, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds in the book, but when, when a member has been around long enough, there's a point where they swear their allegiance to the gods. Not to us, not to me, not to the kindred. They're welcome to come and go as they please although they tend to want to stay, but they swear their allegiance to the God. So after about a year's time on their oath day, if they haven't already chosen a name, then we give them a name and we, we fasten the name to them. I'll give them the name. And in exchange for that, with that, I usually give them the stainless steel arm ring. Now there's more and you can get into the weeds on it or you can buy this book. This is volume two of the Viking Age and it'll give you It'll not only tell you the bits and pieces that are in relation to name fastening and the uh, water sprinkling, but it'll also give references in the sagas where you can go find it and then read more about it instead of just the event, but the events surrounding it. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth on those customs of name fasting and water sprinkling. Uh, but they're definitely connected and they're not just for children. So we adopted those same customs here uh, in the form that I just mentioned. Now it does say, it, it's kind of interesting, that the sprinkling water over a child was performed a custom so common that we're not even told how the water was poured or sprinkled over. So what happened, it was such a common occurrence that we're not even told how they did it, only that it happened all the time. And it was only mentioned in the cases of sons of kings and, and important events in the sagas and the Eddas because everybody just took for granted that if the boy or the child is still alive, then that child was name fastened and water sprinkled because that was the custom of the day. So just as I had mentioned the arm rings that we use, I'll put links in the description for my Amazon bookstore, which includes that two volume set, as well as there'll be a link to my website where you can buy these arm rings and all kinds of other really cool stuff and some really neat downloads and uh, outreach flyers and pamphlets that I've created just for you more on the way. So let's get to our custom of water sprinkling. It says that it was so common, nobody knows how it was done. We had no idea. So we devised our own method, ours based on the, the method that Gallahorn uses. So we have our bowlie. A lot of times we do this, we incorporate this also in a bloat. So we have a separate bowlie, separate from our bloat bowl, because our bloat bowl is usually full of mead or alcohol of some, some sort. And while mead would seem appropriate, because we certainly use it to bless weapons and tools, it's very specifically a water sprinkling. So we have a separate bowl, this nice clean silver bowl, and we use this abalone shell. Now the abalone shell has a series of holes along the side, you can see them on the inside. And it's a very neat effect when you plug the holes, scoop your water, and then let it rain shower on the individual's head. Again, we don't know how it was sprinkled. So this is a, a nice, kind of a ceremonial way that we can do it based on our own intuition. But it's probably just as likely that you could just scoop the water and pour it on or pour it out of a bottle or a vase. Any of those are probably equally just as likely that they happened. And the probability that it was done differently across different regions is, is highly likely as well. So do what works for you. That's what works for us. So we have the larger and the smaller abalone shells which you can get at almost any like Indian store or craft store or things like that. I think you could probably get an abalone shell at Michael's or 
or any craft store. But I'll look on and see if I can find some on Amazon. And if so, then I'll put them in our Amazon store because our Amazon store has a section for altar spaces and ritual tools. So we'll put some of these in there if I can find them. This one was gifted to us from um, from the Gallahorn Gothi Hawk and Veneta. And then we have a couple of these little ones that we've picked up at Goodwill and various other little stores along the way. I like this one to keep in my Gothi travel kit. And then this is our main ritual one that we keep here in our Horg in the house. So I'll show you just a real quick example of how we use the tools mechanically. And then if you stick around to the very end of the video, there is, there'll be a small scene where we actually name and gift and water sprinkle one of our kinsmen, Jafenhar, which means just as high. Now, a lot of this stuff we're talking about, we're talking about Gen 1 Asatru, like myself and Mangidia, uh, and a lot of people who just kind of found this path. But there's another set of Asatuar as well, like our children. Our children were named fast when they were children, when they were little. We did this same thing. Now they're growing up and they are becoming adults within our kindred. Some of them already oath members of the kindred um, because that does not come automatically. They're obviously a member, but they're not considered a voting adult with rights of an adult in a kindred until they've passed certain coming of age rituals. So remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see a little bit about our coming of age ritual that we adhere to in the Northwoods Kindred. And the important distinction is they're no longer children who require us to take care of them. They are now grown men and women who can take care of themselves and arm themselves and stand in the shield wall to protect this kindred. They are now, they are no longer dependents. They are now Eningard. So here's just the mechanical operation of the way that we do it. Of course, you can use whatever appeals to you. So we generally bring the water out in some sort of a container like a carafe or maybe another wine bottle or something, something a little bit special other than just a plastic water bottle. But of course that's fine if that's fine with you. So we have water in this container. It's um it is a simple tap water and we will generally bless it during our ritual that we incorporate the naming into. If we're not doing a ritual in conjunction with the naming, which I've never done, but maybe it's possible, then we would take the time at least individually to ask the gods to bless and purify this water for us. Um, and if you're into crystals and rock magic and stuff, then you could probably, your smudge or whatever you would want to do, you could do that also. Whatever, whatever it feels right to you to purify this water for this purpose. Now we have, this is my small one, my travel one. Uh, the larger one works well for us because I can hold it and plug the holes. If you can see that, I can plug those holes with my hand. And then my Gija can fill it, uh, which you'll see soon. But with the smaller one in the travel, I usually don't have a helper and I'm on my own. So I have this small one and I can just scoop the water, plug it, and then let it, let it flow. So there's that possibility. Or the another possibility is I could actually just hold both scoop and pour just like this and just pour it right over their head without ever having to plug the holes at all it's a little shower it's a little more festive but barring that and not having the right tools shouldn't forbid i think that this was probably the most traditional way to water sprinkle one thing that we'll never do um, and you'll see in the video coming up is I don't ask my kinsmen who are way taller than me I don't ask them to bow so that I can do it. I'll either stand on, stand on a stump, stand on a rock, or stand on my tippy toes but I won't ask them to bow before me so that I can water sprinkle them. I will find a way to get up to their level but that's just here at the Northwoods. And lastly, and this is entirely up to your own choice making and obviously there's no references traditionally to it but you can always pick herbs. We happen to have yarrow right here, but you can always pick purification herbs uh, to add to your smudge or whatever. And also you can add that to your water to give it that, uh, that clean aromatic smell, that purifying feeling that uh, 
that something like yarrow or other herbs would give it. It kind of make it that much more special. Is there any other work to be performed? Yes. I, I, we yeah. have to name our brother. He has to have a good, strong heathen name. Front and center, unnamed heathen. <laughs> <laughs> have you come with a name? I, I have. Uh, and it's gonna be Yothenhar. Yothenhar. And what does that mean? That means uh, equally high. Equally high. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. In the name of Frey and Freya, Njord and the Almighty Os Odin, I bless this water that it may rinse away all the filth that came with you. This is the old custom, and in the old custom it says that it was such a common occurrence that they didn't even mention how the water was sprinkled, so we designed it our own way. But whenever a name was given to either a child or, or to an adult who received a different name for Valorant combat or whatever, then this was the ritual that took place. So, can you remove your hat? Yes. I won't ask you about. With this water, we wash away all the Christianity. You are now a blooded heathen. Yes. I dub you Yafenhar. Hell Yafenhar. Hell Yafenhar. And with that, as is our custom, your one year oath day, your new name, and your gift. Thank you. Wear it with pride, brother. Thank you. I hope that I delivered on my promise and I hope that I gave you the, the resources that you want and the information that you were looking for in relation to baptism. There's not a whole lot of sources on it, but we do know that it was a common ritual. It happened so often that it was almost just mundane and not even worth writing down. So we, at least we have a couple of snippets of information from it throughout the Viking Age that we can draw as much information out as possible, fill in the blanks, and incorporate it into our own kindred rituals. I hope that works for you. Thank you for watching the video, and may you always find divine inspiration when rediscovering the rituals of our fathers' fathers. Thor Vigi.